Are you struggling in your business, whether you're just starting or you've already had clients for a while, but now you're going back and trying to make sure that all of the actual business techniques and how to automate And then on top of that, what about your limiting beliefs? Have you looked at the beliefs that you have around your business? If these are things that you are struggling with and you feel like you need a community, then I have the answer for you. We have a coaching community that we are now not doing just coaching sessions. We are also doing workshops and we are doing co-working sessions where we get together in small groups and we work specifically on your business. If this is something that you are interested in, go to ProOrganizersCoach.com and click the membership tab, or you can go directly to Calendly.com slash ProOrganizersCoach slash consultation to set up your free 30-minute Zoom consultation with me, where we can talk about the best ways that I can help you, whether it's my one-on-one coaching program or it's the community of other professional organizers that I'm helping on a daily basis. We would love to see you in there. And if you've not joined the Facebook group, make sure to go to facebook.com slash groups slash pro organizers coach to join today. All of the links will be in the show notes below and all of the links will be at ProOrganizersCoach.com. So now let's get on with today's episode. You are listening to the Pro Organizers Coach podcast. I'm Samantha Brown, a professional organizer and business coach. In this podcast, you will learn how to start and scale the organizing business of your dreams. So let's jump in. Welcome back to the Pro Organizers Coach Podcast. On today's episode, I have Palak. She is from Naples, Florida. She's a professional organizer, and her business is called Every Space Counts by Palak. And so Palak uses different social media in her business. And what I wanted for you all was to have an episode that was that was talking with with a professional organizer that uses social media to grow her business and her following. And then I also am wanting to bring on a different organizer that has not used social media. So then for you as the listener that's just starting your business, or even if you've been doing this for a while, you can kind of decide for yourself, is this something that I want to do? Do I want to use social media or do I not? Thank you, Palette, for being on the podcast. It's actually my first podcast. I'm very excited to share all my excitement news and all my reviews to my clients. First, I really would love to hear um, how long have you been a professional organizer and kind of what made you become one? Sure. I mean, I'll give you a little bit about me and my background. Uh, By profession, I'm also a physical therapist for about like 20 years now. So working with like a lot of clients, like a lot of senior and young clients, and I have been in home health for all this year. So I have seen a difference like when there is a clutter-free home versus a cluttered home. And then my niche was always like an organizing um, path. Every time I go to a patient's home, I would see that, you know, things don't run together, like medicines are not organized properly, or like there are stuff sitting in the hallway or the closet when they're trying to reach with the wheelchair or walker. Um, I used to get frustrated and then I would go and fix them, you know, leaving my therapy part and they would be so happy the next day or they would call me or leave me a little card, like postcard, like, Palak, this is amazing. Like, you know, just a little five minutes of your touch changed my life. And then as I started my life into having kids, like I ended up having twin boys and like life changes after having twin boys. So working full time, having twin boys and juggling, I mean, me and my husband, like, we really needed an organized life and um both of us like struggled initially for first few months but my life was always organized like and i started like you know um organizing my not only starting kids room to a kid schedule like i traveled by myself samantha all by myself to india carrying twin boys when they're only 30 months old i had a scheduled plan like organization doesn't mean like you know it's just a room to like house but it also has to be a schedule I had everything packed properly. My schedule was like 9 a.m. I'm going to feed my kids. 10 a.m. I'm going to change the diaper. 10.30, they're going to be sleeping so that I can eat properly on my flight. 
So that actually turned out to be a passion then. And a lot of friends and like my patients would reach out to me saying, would you help me to do this? Like, you know, and then back in 2018, I really turned my passion into an organization that I wanted. And as I went, I had small clients like, you know, and then I thought of doing an online class and I was like, wow, it's actually a school that I can go back and find out how I can organize more professionally, which can help my clients. Um, so I joined Beth actually uh, back in 2020, 20, when COVID hit. And um, she actually um, helped me to get into a more professional scope back in 2020 when COVID hit with everything was shut. And I never realized that this could actually bring my passion into business and into a growing wealth where I could help my family as well. Yeah, that's amazing. I think all of us as professional organizers, you know, our background might be different. Our story might be different. But for the most part, it seems to be that we have a heart to help people and that we want. Yes, to, yeah. absolutely. I so agree. If you don't have the passion and the heart to help people, you cannot be a professional home organizer or like a schedule organizer. You need to have that in your life first, in your heart. Then you can be able to help others. And if you're taking money for somebody, I would say you need to put your whole and soul in it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, we know it's not cheap, especially once we go, quote unquote, legit and we're paying taxes and, you know, doing absolutely. All, all of the business side of things. You know, it does cost people money. And so I always try to remember if I was paying someone to come into my home and I was paying them this amount of money to come yes, help me in my true. home, then how would I want them to be? What would I want them to do to to go above and beyond? And you know, like I did, I put out an episode, um, I think it was episode 12. And we talked all about adding value to your clients and like what extra value can you give them beyond what they are expecting? Because then when you walk away, they are going to feel like just like your five minutes that you were helping each one of your clients with physical therapy, just that extra added value of that five minutes of fixing things got yes. it to where people were like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. I need her in yes. my life. Absolutely. That made a difference. Like all you need is like when, when you leave, they should be happy and think about you. Like, you know, and I always have a habit of checking with them. Like at the end of the day, like just keep posting because what happens in post 24 hours stays for the rest of the life. Yes, very much so. Yeah. And then I also try to around like the either the holiday time or a few months later, I try to reach back out, even if it's just by text to just right. say, hey, how are things going? Are there anything that we need to tweak? You know, is there anything True. else that I can help you with? Because True. when you stay front and center in their mind, even if they haven't thought about you in a couple months, if you send them a message or even like, you know, on Thanksgiving, I'll send a cute little like yeah, um, what are those called? GIFs, GIFs. Yes. <laughs> you know, those true. little things. Yes, that helps a lot, actually. It's just like a quick reminder. Gosh, I forgot about you, Palik. And oh my God, like I I really need you here. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, that really helps. Absolutely. Awesome. So let's kind of switch gears into the social media thing, um, because that's what we definitely want to talk about in this episode. So I was curious, what made you decide to use social media just in general for your business? Because I know that there, you know, a lot of people either choose to use social media or they choose not to, or like I always suggest to the women that I'm coaching that are just starting out, especially in the beginning to just pick one platform and show up consistently. So you at least have a place to display your before and after photos and that people can follow you and see what's going on with you. Um, but for you, you like I, I looked through your stuff and everything that, you know, I help my my business clients or the everything I help my coaching clients with when they're starting their organizing business is a lot of what you have. You know, like you've got your Facebook business page, you've, you're on Instagram, you're uh, you have your Google My Business platform set up with reviews. You've got a website with your testimonials and with your gallery of the work that you've done. And so you've done a phenomenal job making sure that you have all of those foundational pieces. And so I was just kind of wondering what made you decide to 
to go that route and to make sure you had a Facebook business page, but then also now also being on Instagram quite a bit? Sure. Um, like as um, I had my expectation a lot from the senior clients to like, you know, um, take help from me. But senior clients, they often, they tend to be shy, you know, calling somebody home or they don't know exactly what professional home organizer does. But a young, lot of young moms, like, you know, their kids or their daughter-in-law or like their daughter, they are always on Facebook and Instagram. And 99.9% of my clients are seniors, but their kids find me. Like a lot of clients sitting somewhere in Canada, like, you know, uh, but their mom lives in Naples and they found me on social media and they're like, oh, like my, I'm traveling so-and-so month. But this is, I'm talking about very first client. Like I got a client from Canada and I was like, whoa. Uh, I mean, I hope she knows that I'm not doing virtual. And she's like, no, my mom is in Naples and I don't know how far you are from her, but I did see your Facebook page. And that time it was just the beginning. I barely had any post, but I was just trying to reach out on Facebook on the mom's group, like, you know, posting, hey, you know, I'm here starting new, but I do have experience. So stuff like that, like, you know, young moms, young um, professionals, they always try to reach you on Instagram and Facebook, especially the mom's group. And that's how they found out. And a lot of my clients, like they are um, lawyers or like, you know, um, they are, uh, facility managers, but they don't go and ask people. They would just put on search a search box and like you know organizer in Naples. That's how when your name pops up, they always try to take even the price code. But if from a price code, when you talk to them, they basically I will mail them down. I would love to come and do your consult, and that time you have to sell yourself that how best you are to help them. So social media, when they are looking at your page or your post. All you want is like small and short pictures and posts so that they know what you exactly do. And that's how their word is going to spread. And honest to God, Samantha, like during holiday times, people will not ask anyone. People will just put their name on the search box. Like how can they be helped? Yeah, no, I think that that's amazing to, you know, a lot of times also, especially I think for me personally, the difference in Facebook to Instagram is Facebook, it does seem to be not the older people, you know, but it does seem to be the people that you can have more of a conversation with and that it can be right. more, you know, more of like a, a post, but then they're kind of reading what the post is about. True. Where on Instagram, what I've recently realized is it really is more of a, a younger crowd, but it also seems to be a better place to do actual like videos. True. Yeah. And so that, you know, so each platform has its pros and cons. And it, I, I guess it just kind of depends on what you want to display for your business. But having a Facebook business page, in my opinion, is very vital because it's a place you can send people that every time you put something on there, at least, you know, they're going to see what you're posting. Absolutely. And it's a base platform that it connects you with the new customer, new faces, new fans. And they, when you offer them key information about your business page and services, Facebook will be powerfully taking your business to the next level. And it's actually for small or business organization is the best platform. Yes, I completely agree. And so then I also was kind of curious, do you personally have a certain place that you spend more time or do you try to do kind of the same thing and put it on each platform? How, how does that kind of work for you? So for posting on social media, I always prefer first and 15th of the month because that, those are the times like basically all the ads come out. And what I do is like I try to put not on my Facebook page, but I will take a picture from my Facebook page or I will make one. And I will post it on the mom's group, like both on Facebook and like Instagram mom's group. I will post it everywhere and that page is actually shared a million times. Like, so if like, if I know, like right now, I don't know if you know, but we are into the hurricane, post hurricane season. Um, a lot of moms are actually browsing pages and they are sharing my page just to see that how like we are under construction now, but definitely we will need your help five months down the road now once the construction is done. To me, it's interesting, depending on where you live as to, you know, knowing the times of the year that you will be extra busy and then the times of the year that you might not be as busy. 
Right. I mean, in Naples, usually I'm busy from like October to all the way till March. It's my most busy season. And then it slows down because the kids are home for spring break and summer break, even though they actually need help when kids are home. Uh, but th- this is a time of the year that I was expecting more clients, but like post hurricane, the entire Southwest Florida has been destroyed and I feel terrible about it. But like once it is fixed, I can see like back in Jan and Feb, it's going to get super busy in summer. I'm sure they're going to use me um, because that's the time like you have, they have dumped all the stuff like, you know, in a container or in a storage. And now it's time for me to just come and put it back, everything where it should be organized. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, okay, so on the 1st and 15th of each month, that's a really good time. And so for you personally, do you do ads on Facebook and on Instagram? Or do you just do ads on Facebook? Or how is your ad set up? So my ad has been set up with like Instagram and Facebook both for on 15th and 1st, I will actually tend to post more on Facebook. Because Instagram is absolutely, I agree. But the platform, Facebook platform has a great idea to share. The page is shareable. So I think that's a great way to share more options because a lot of friends, my, they will post in their story time, my page. So that helps versus in Instagram. Um, if they're, if, even if you have like 50 friends, but like your page will not be posted the first. So clients have actually, or the fans have to browse through the Instagram stories to find you versus on Facebook, you will be posted right away. Yes. Yeah. Because they've chosen to follow you. And so then they, right. you are automatically in their feed when they're looking. Real quick, I was actually kind of curious when it comes to posting on Facebook or on Instagram, do you have any certain like apps or tips that you use that make it easier for you? Uh, Making it easy, I would say, first of all, my niche is always like to keep it more realistic. So I try to post all my pictures that are real uh, without any filters. So I would say directly posting pictures without adding any filter with videos, I might use a filter to pop up the pictures, but the work that I really want them to be like, you know, to be seen. So I would say um, go from like five seconds to like 10 seconds to 20 seconds of your pictures. I mean, the videos and then without a filter, use the basic picture that will give the realistic frame that about your work. Yeah. And and you don't spend all of that time trying to make it look into something it's not. That's a a time saver also. (laughs) <laughs> yes. And when it when it's time for reviews, people are going to say your pictures are really like professional. But when it comes to like the timing, like when I actually when I'm there at the place, it has to be realistic. So if I leave the house showing them that this is a picture that you want to create and I'm going to do that. But with the filters, it's different. That's actually a fraud. That's what I feel. So all my pictures, honest to God, I have barely used any filters uh, unless I'm like brightening up the picture just to make sure that they can clearly see. I don't use any filters as a basic pictures coming from my iPhone. Yeah. And I mean, that's, yeah, I completely agree with that. Now on the, speaking of like photos versus videos, what do you find it gets the most engagement or is the best way to to show what it is that you're doing. Definitely the videos talks versus the pictures, pictures, picture, I would say people would just browse it for videos. They can talk even though you are not in the video personally, but that five second or 10 second will give them a complete impact on what actually they're looking at. Yeah. And would you say, would you say when you're posting the video, is it easier to do that on Facebook or on Instagram? Absolutely. Videos are more easier, directly easy. Yes. Yeah. More easy. On, yeah. Inst- on Instagram? On Instagram. Yes. Yeah. And so I also, uh, which we were talking about this before we got, we started recording, but on Instagram, they also have the way that you can choose how you're going to do the videos. So then even if it's photos that are scrolling, it still shows it as a video clip. Yeah, those are called as Instagram Reels. And I believe that there are, I'm I'm a firm believer that Instagram Reels travels longer than the actual videos. So even if you are making a video, it's better to make an Instagram Reel video because all your pictures, they are in slideshows. And even if you add a little bit of more clips of what you're talking about, that creates our actual story 
or actually movie for them to actually visualize what am I talking about or what are they expecting from me. So yes, Instagram reels are the best way to approach people. And I have always seen they travel more longer distance overseas as well. And it's shareable. So people can actually share your Instagram reels into their private messages. And that's how I have got a lot of new clients. Oh, well, then that's amazing. So definitely, yes. if you're doing Instagram, go for the reels. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of time people text me like a lot of times and they're like, I'm like, I don't even know you. And they're like, yes, but I just want to be friends with you and just want to follow you, which is great. But then at the end of the month, they might be like, all right, I'll pay you for an hour or so, but I do need help and tips just to like, it's a small corner of the house or they are stuck with something. They still call you like, you know, just being a follower. Yes. Yeah. And it's a proven fact that you, for people for online, people have to know, like, and trust you. And so to get that know, like, and trust factor, they have, it has now gone up. It used to be that you had to be in front of their eyes seven times. Yes. Yes. Now, now it's up to 21 times you have to be in front of their eyeballs for them to consider you someone that they know, like, and trust. But once True. you once you gain that trust, yes. then, then from then on, they're a super fan, not just a fan, but they are they trust you. They know you. They like you. They're, they are willing to then buy from you or, you know, get you to come into their home, which is huge as a professional organizer. Are people being able to feel like they can trust us? Absolutely. And I will share a, a short story with you. Like this is the lady I ran into at Publix. And she's like, oh, Palak, it's you. I have followed you on mom's Facebook group. And I was like, it's so sweet. Like, you know, people running into grocery store and saying hi to you. So she kept following me. And then she's like, it's nice to meet you at the grocery store. And then a couple of months, and then she'll keep asking me questions based on my pictures that I was posting. And then a year later, when she bought a new house, she's like, I'm trying to do all this, like, based on your pictures, but I'm stuck here. Like, you know, but your stories tell, I mean, my video stories was telling her everything. She's like, looks like it's, yes, you have the niche, you have your hands, but I can't do it. I need you here. So that even creates a memory for them. Oh, you know what? Palak did this in her Instagram reels. I just want her to come and do the same reel with me. So yeah. that helps. Yeah. She's like, why can I do it? I'm doing exactly the same thing that you did in your reel. But it's then that's how, when your professional hands comes on. Yes. Yeah. And I've learned also for a lot of my clients too, it's not that they can't do it per se. It's more that two things, either one, they don't have the time because they're busy working or they're busy right. you know, doing whatever. And so they would rather spend money to get it accomplished instead True. of having to deal with the time. And then other, other clients, it seems like it's more of just you know, it's more fun to do it with someone and to be able to bounce ideas with someone and, and to have somebody there helping you. I have, yes. a lot, yeah, I have a lot of clients that they will get stuff done in between our sessions that they would have never gotten done if we hadn't even started yes. working together. So I just feel that I'm the jump start for them. Like I honest to God, they pay me for 12, 14 hours, like with my package pricing. And then in the middle of the session, they're like, Palak, I want to accomplish this one. Like, so they would ask me, so what's our next session going to be? And I was like, okay, fine. So da 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 da, we are going to do this. And they're like, okay, I'm going to start. And then you help me where I get stuck. So that is what you want. Because at the end of the session, you want your client to learn. Like, you know, they're paying you. You want them to learn to maintain. Yes. So yeah, it's definitely a jump start for all the clients, which that's what you should be happy about as well, I feel. Oh, I do too, completely. Yeah, um, yes. And one other quick question, which is kind of back to the reels, but I was curious when you're doing reels, what is a good time frame of a video or of a reel that you are posting on Instagram? A minimum of five seconds to 20 seconds at the most, because 20 seconds, it will tell you whole and soul of your um, story that you're trying to input. After 20, 30 seconds, after 20 seconds, I would say um, people do get bored watching the reels over and over again. And they'll be like, it's a repetition of something. So I would say at the max, if you want to engage your clients and your fans within 20 seconds, that's the best time frame. Which is amazing, especially if we're doing a before and after 
yes. video because that yes. gives us, you know, 10 seconds for a good before video and 10 seconds for a good after video. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I always say like, you know, if you're doing like an Instagram reel, five seconds first, five seconds, just do the wow pictures, like, you know, so they, they start to get engaged. Then from five to 10 seconds, do the before and then write a little tip, like a little tip about like a Friday tip or a Tuesday tip. And then end your after pictures within like one or two seconds. Ah. So that will be all. So add a little tip to your reels that will really impact the clients. Yeah. So then they're not just seeing what you've done, but they feel like right. they, they are taking they have away gained something. something. Yes. Yeah. They have gained something from the reels. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And I was actually going to ask you, because I think it was on yours that I had seen about the reviews. So do you post, um, <clears throat> I think it's like a, a picture and I'm pretty sure it was yours, but it was a, a picture in the background of the after photo. And then in front of it, it was a review without putting the person's full name, but yes. just putting the review of what they said about your work. Yes. And the clients mm -hmm. has to approve that beforehand if they want their pictures like, you know, posted with the review. Most of the time when they review us on Instagram or Google, they write their full name. But when I'm posting it, it goes out like, you know, within thousand people. So I always like to check with them whether it's okay for your full name to go. Um, so last name always and the first name will be the initial with a picture that gives an impact. Absolutely. It will give you an impact and the name will tell everything where the person is from. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, even because a lot of my clients, there's only been one or two that have been very like not wanting me to do before and after photos. But that is normally because I talk about it during the consultation. So they're just getting to know me. But right. as, as we work together and as they get to know me and as they see the transformation happening in front of their eyes, then they're asking me, can you send me the before photos? Can you send me the after photos? I want to share with people. I want to put it on <laughs> social media myself. And <clears throat> so even if they're a little hesitant at first, they they most of the time come, you know, are more than happy to have you do it by the time you get done working with them. Absolutely. It definitely works. Like a client just texted me recently. She's like, Palak, um, so her daughter just got married and she's like, everybody who came for the wedding, they were like, wow, what have you done to the pantry? So Pala, I do happen to have the before pictures so like I can actually share with them, look what I did. And like everybody was taking pictures of the pantry and she's, she felt accomplished, like, you know, and when yeah. you hear from them, you feel like, yes, absolutely. I do have the before pictures. I did have a habit of deleting the before pictures once I post into on Instagram or stories. But it's a great way to store in an album, like all the before pictures so the clients can get an idea of what exactly you're going to work from. Yes. Yeah. And I'm actually in the process right now of trying to go through and make little folder folders. So then once it's done, I can keep up with it, but either on like my Google Drive or, you know, wherever, but an actual folder for each person's project. So then it doesn't right. have to stay on my phone, but Correct. I still have access to it to where I can send it to them if they right. You know, want. <clears throat> right. And I always feel like email is the best way to like, once you start actually the conversation, if you take the conversation through an email, show them the before picture and start the conversation. So follow the same link. And uh, so when they are looking for something, you can always browse like, you know, these are the emails that we started. So even if you forget, they will have a before after pictures or what conversation were you carrying over? Oh, that's good. Yeah, because then if you keep using that same, e this, <clears throat> excuse me, if you keep using the same email, then like you said, they can always scroll back through and have the yes. before photos without having to ask you for it. And it seems more professional. Like, hey, hey I just sent, you know, sent you the before photos in this email. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. That's actually something I'm probably going to start implementing. <laughs> yes. And that's why even you forget, like if a client is a year or you're two years old and she's like, Halik, this is what you told me um, last time to get, you know, everybody has a budget and she's like, but now I'm into budget, but looks like the product that you suggested is out of stock. Any other product that you think can fit into my um, size frame. So you forgot everything about it. What happened a year ago? I don't know what was a size frame, what, you know. So follow the email, scroll through down, and then you can exactly see the link. And all oh, right, fine. I have the dimensions. I'm going to look for the new ones. So that way you don't have to keep notes or track of what's going on. 
Yeah, I think that's amazing. I actually have a lady that I'm getting ready to put an episode out about, um, which by the time we do this one, it will actually be a previous episode. Um, yes. But she came on and talked all about this um, program that she uses called 17 Hats. And it was developed specifically for it's the client um, type app, you know, where it helps you keep up with your clients and the invoices and the emails. That's and the, nice. And the, okay. Yeah. And the contracts and stuff. And so I've, I'm still trying to decide if that's something I even want to go with, because <laughs> up until now, all I would do is just put notes in my phone. So like if we measure something, it becomes a note connected to their name in my phone. So I can, right. you know, and so each of us have our own way is, is my point with this. But the point being is make sure you find whatever system works best for you, because exactly like you said, they will call back in six months to a year or whenever it is. Yes. And they'll be asking questions about when you worked with them previous. And there's no way to remember that stuff. So definitely, if you are new and just getting started, even if it's just making a note, you know, next to their contact, or if it's just like she was saying about the emails, that's a great way to make sure that you're constantly speaking to them in email or whatever that system is. Make sure you come up with some sort of system to Correct. remember all of those things. True. Very true. Yes. Yeah. And so um, I actually, I had a quick little question I wanted to ask. Um, do you ever wish that you could stop posting or do you love coming up with content? I do wish that I would stop posting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are pros and cons, but definitely I would say one negative factor is like a lot of my pictures would tell the entire story um, or how I worked or they would get an exact idea. Um, so more as I was posting, um, like I felt like, you know, instead of clients calling me, they are taking my ideas from my pictures and stories and they're working on their own. So I have stopped posting more pictures of my recent work, but I would post a tip or like I would um, commercialize it. Like as if you, if you need help, I'm here to help you. So I would say every 1st and 15th, as I was talking about, I would post, but I would not post my new, you know, clients reviews or I just want them to um, call me and like figure out. And if when they reach me, I will personally show them all the portfolios of what I have done recently. But and it's a lot of time consuming as well, because if you want to post something, it needs to be perfect, eye catchy. You just don't want to randomly post. Yes. Yeah. And Canva is a great place to, to help is. with a lot of that. Yeah. Yes. And it, and it definitely if you are new to Canva, don't get frustrated take a deep breath, you know, just yep. conti continue to use it and you will get to a place where it becomes a whole lot easier to use Canva, but there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve at first. Of it, how there is, there yeah. is, yeah. So instead of giving out, giving out the entire movie, just show them like a trailer. Right, yeah, that, hey, that's a beautiful way to put it, of a trailer compared to giving them the whole movie for free. <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think that that's been amazing. I appreciate um, all of the information about, <clears throat> you know, just social media in general and kind of the pros and cons. And, of course, we know, you know, with the cons, it, it's time consuming. It takes time to learn the apps like Canva or even the apps like Instagram and Facebook. And um, I was curious, though, would you say that it's been worth your money to to do the ads versus not doing the ads? Yeah, absolutely. It's worth because even if you're spending like five, ten dollars you're getting like $100 in an hour. Like, you know, um, the return is definitely impeccable. So I would say definitely it's worth. That's good. And then, um, so yeah, I was just kind of curious, is there anything else that you would like the listener to know about posting or about using social media for your business or you know, anything that you wish you would have known or that someone would have told you when you were first starting out? Yeah, definitely. Like when I started out, I knew about like a lot of filters, use this app, clean out the pictures, brighten up the pictures, like, you know, take the shady pad out. But what I felt like I wish I have known, like, because I was struggling, like even if my work was so beautiful, pictures will not turn out great just because I'm comparing my pictures to Pinterest. And Pinterest is commercialized. Clients will be expecting a lot from Pinterest, what is you. So I always say, like, you know, be realistic with your pictures. You don't have to filter them. You don't have to filter your videos. Be realistic. Even though you end your job, like, you know, um, say uh, clients will tell you, oh, I think I'm done with you. I'm really happy. 
rest of the session, I'm going to carry you out. Take the pictures, even if it's half done, because at the end of the session, you taught your client how to finish the job. So you can always write it like, you know, like this is what I did half is through or because I always fear because all, a lot of my clients, they'll, you know, call me for 10, 15 hours. And before I could even take pictures, like ask the pictures of the entire room, um, I'm done because they are so happy with me. They learn so much. They're like, well, Palak, I'm done. And then they'll call me a few months later. So I don't have an exact after picture. But be realistic. This is how you end up because your clients are happy with you, even though the pictures are undone. Yeah, absolutely. So. And, on, and on that note, I would like to add, I have had, so I don't filter any of my photos. I do use Canva to put like a cute little, to, yeah. to make it look professional where I put yes. like the before and the after photo side by side just to make it look a little more professional. But right. I will say that from that and having them on my website and just as is like from the same angle, the before and the after and it being that being the photo that they see, uh -huh. I've had multiple people reach out to me and say, because it looked so messy and because it looked so real uh -huh. was the only reason that they reached out to me compared to the other organizers. I in area. so agree. Yes, I so agree. And 90% of the people need realistic life. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kitchen is going to get messy in like 24 hours if you don't show them proper system or if they are not ready to follow system. So even if you do the pantry or the kitchen, you declutter the counters. But like in 24 hours, junk is going to be back. You need to have a proper system for that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and I actually, um, real quick, I got um, certified as a life coach because I realized that for a lot of my clients, it, it was more emotional than it was physical. Like the physical space I could go in and help them with. But then like you're saying, overnight, it's going to go right back because you've not helped them work through the emotional stuff or change right. the way True. that they're doing things. And so now I even have a lot of clients that, you know, I help them with the physical stuff in our sessions, but then they start life coaching with me and then we're able to work on how to maintain it and maybe what caused it in the first place or what makes them do that. But then that also gives them accountability where even if we coach twice a month, Every time I coach with them, they want to show me how it still looks that good or it's, you know, how the progress that's coming along. And I have found that to be an amazing partnership with my professional organizing because it it keeps you in that relationship with that person to where then they are able to have accountability, but also learn more of how to maintain and keep it that way. I so agree on that. I so agree on that very well, I, much. I appreciate you so much for coming on the podcast. And again, if any of you want to follow her, it is Every Space Counts by Pilek and in Naples, Florida. And then, of course, go on Instagram and her Facebook page. But we'll have all of her links in the show notes below. And yeah, I appreciate you so much for coming on the podcast. And for you, the listener, I hope that this was helpful. And if you've been thinking about using social media in your business. We really hope that this has helped you gain some insight and ideas. We will catch you on the next one. You have been listening to the Pro Organizers Coach podcast. Go to the show notes to find all of the links mentioned in this episode and hit that subscribe and automatic download button so you don't miss a single thing. Thanks for listening.